It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back guys. Time to do a brief tutorial on how to do Operation Sea Lion. So, if you want to be really, really, really cheesy, what you can do is invade from the very tip of Denmark into the north of England, therefore avoiding the English Channel, or you can do it from Norway into the north of England again. I wouldn't recommend dropping into Scotland because of the mountains and the infrastructure isn't as high. Uh, that port is pretty good, the one right, right on the tip of Scotland, uh, but the rest of them are not as good. The best ports are in the south and on the northeast coast. So, we're going to do it through the English Channel, pretty much the hardest possible way of doing it. Uh, more than likely, they'll have a lot of troops in the south, but if you manage to grab a port in the south, you're pretty much sorted. First thing you need to do is grab your fleet, and what I'd recommend, just so your fleet has a lot of sustainability, is to have a lot of submarines and destroyers. Submarines are particularly great because they will class as naval sup superiority in a region, and they're very difficult to hit. So that means you'll be able to hold naval superiority in a region for a long period of time, well, until they whittle down the amount of submarines that you've got. So we're going to go for convoy escort, and what this is going to mean is they're going to try their absolute best to help escorts out as much as they can, and do their absolute best to try and avoid the main fleet of the enemy. Not the United States has joined the war. Okay, so we have a naval invasion ready. Uh, this took a very long time to plan and go ahead with. Uh, this took about 90 days, and we have got the technology 2 for landing craft. You could probably do it landing craft one, but you're only going to be deploying 10 divisions, and that's going to be really tricky to grab any ground. Now, I've not gone for any uh, Marines. Now, if you are playing against a player, Marines are probably going to be what you're going to need, because they're going to hold the coastlines a lot stronger, uh, with probably using uh, naval forts. Uh, what do you call them? Let's have a look. What are they? What's the correct name for them? Coastal forts. They probably have coastal forts. They'll probably have a lot more troops holding the ground. What the AI tends to do is hold a lot of troops on provinces that have naval bases. So what you're going to particularly try to do is grab a naval base on the south and then go from there. So what we're going to do is wait for the, the navy to get into position. And there they go. They're in position now. There you go. Escort Dewey. They're going to get hit now by naval bombers over and over again, so you've got to act pretty quickly. So we've got a lot of planes. I don't particularly think these help out that much, to be fair, but I've been making planes, so we're going to use them anyhow. So we've got a bunch of planes here, fighters and naval bombers. And there's another one somewhere. Yep, there's one here in Calais. So you can put them on naval air superiority and naval strike. This will offer them a little bit of cover and therefore protect your convoys when they do move across the English Channel and we're going to go. Now if you do click on this and engage it and it gives a reason why it can't be done, more than likely the reason is, is you don't have naval superiority in that region and the easiest thing to do is just to throw a ton of uh, boats into this area so you do have naval superiority. And there you go, they're going now. They are more likely going to get hit as soon as they start taking off but then you'll be okay as you go from there. Now the plan is to make a beachhead and grab a naval port. Um, ideally we'd want to make our own. We don't really want to uh, uh, be making a naval base. There's probably not going to be enough time. It takes about four months to build a naval port. I might call it, I keep calling it a naval port. It's a naval base. So as we're landing, we're winning here, we're losing here, so we're losing here, we're winning kind of here. I'm actually kind of surprised we're winning that one. I don't know why the AI does this, but they seem to like group up. So we've sent 24 divisions to engage here, but one's engaged here, one's engaged here, and, and 22 is engaged on this point. Don't ask me why the AI does this. It doesn't divide them up evenly. No clue why, but it doesn't matter. So what we're going to do here is we sit this two divisions here, and it looks like there's one here and one here. We're going to get a landing here, and then what we'll do is we'll probably try and grab Dover so we've got that port. So how are things going on the coastline? We there's, there's only lost they've lost one fighter. We've lost one fighter and they've lost three. So the things are going okay. Don't really need to worry about too much about that to be fair. Uh, I guess you could probably put your fighters on this coastline to reduce the enemy's defense. That probably would be a smart thing to do that. In fact, let's just do that. Let's pause the game and actually do that. Uh, can we move them over from here to here? Yeah, let's do that. So this is going to reduce the enemy's defense. There you go. Air superiority, reduce their defense. This will make it very easy for you to grab a beachhead. So I guess it makes more sense to, once you're 
convoys have made it over the sea and they've not got hit by naval bombers when they've landed there for they'll have an option. They're going to split them up now. Try and aim for this one. Uh, I've got to go here too. Move the troops here. Looks like they've left Portsmouth open. So I'm going to move these troops here to keep them pinned in. And then grab Portsmouth here. Now usually I'd usually go for Dover. But they've got seven divisions here. We are winning but it's probably going to take a while. What tends to happen is the minute you launch an attack. A naval attack. And then land. Is the AI is going to detect that you've landed troops. So they'll shimmy all their troops from the north downwards. So it is a matter of time for you to grab a port as soon as you can. And try and make a beachhead. Because if you don't you're going to get you get get surrounded by quite a lot of divisions and you, things aren't going to happen for you. There we go. We grabbed a port. At this stage, it's pretty much over. There's nothing to worry about. So this stage, we've got a big fat tank division. We're going to engage them here. Make a front line. Tell them to attack into Scotland. Attack and also be aggressive. And that is pretty much it. They're going to move over now. A few of them may get hit by naval bombers, but it's not really a big deal. As you're noticing, these guys are on escort duty and they're not actively engaging with the fleet. Now, if I put them on patrol or search and destroy, search and destroy, they could. So a strategy could be is you maybe want to grab the enemy fleet and keep them in position like we're doing now. There you go. So now we've engaged with their fleet. So that'll keep them preoccupied while we move our convoys over. I guess that could be a strategy you want to go for. All right, we've got the full fleet now. Uh, this is our separate army. Maybe we want to give these some orders. I don't know, go here. And you guys all go here. And go when you're ready. Be aggressive too and you're going to move up. Put up to four speed and that's pretty much it, guys. That is pretty much how you do Operation Sea Lion. Uh, the AI will try and reinforce this front line, but if you move quite swiftly once you've already landed, you've pretty much sorted it out for them anyway. There's a little front line here that's opened up. We'll grab Plymouth and then we'll be okay. And that's pretty much it, guys. The only issue you're probably going to find is if you do a landing and you stay on these provinces for too long, uh, they'll reinforce and they'll make a really thick front line that you'll be struggled to get through. But if the minute you land and start deploying like heavy divisions such as tank divisions that are pretty quick, uh, you won't have many, many issues and that's pretty much how you do it. And we could probably speed up to 5 speed now and see them churn up the UK. You see they are hitting our convoys at the bottom right now and you can also see that there's a big sea battle happening here. Yet again, we've engaged the British fleet by going patrol or search and destroy. And it's engaged them right now, so it's keeping them distracted. I, I don't know. It's completely optional, this. I find that if you go on escort duty, you find you don't engage the fleet. But then again, if you're playing against a player, maybe search and destroy or patrol is a better option because you're going to engage their fleet and you're going to pull them away. So you're going to stop them from hitting the convoys. So in that circumstance, the only thing you really need to worry about is naval bombers. And that's pretty much all you need to know. We probably grab Liverpool here. We'll pretty much end this. Most of their victory points are in the, pretty much in England anyway, and they a lot of the victory points are concentrated quite heavily as well. So once you grab them, you can pretty much end them pretty quickly. So you can see they've concentrated quite a lot of forces here. But to be fair, they would have a lot more troops in this position if we'd not engaged them really quickly, because there's a few divisions we've overrun just because the fact that our tank divisions are so insanely strong. Want to know what the tank divisions look like? This is pretty much it. It's a uh, 10 combat width with three medium tanks and with motorized divisions. 10 combat width, that's what I aim for. And the infantry divisions consist of the classic uh, 20 combat width with two artilleries. So they have a lot of soft attack. A lot, a lot of soft attack. And that is pretty much it. I'm going to take over the AI now and just grab the remaining areas. As we keep attacking and blitzkrieging them quite quick, we can pretty much make a puncture and push through with a spearhead because they've got all these troops engaged in these areas. And they'll capitulate any minute now. Look, they retook out Glasgow. Nice. there putting a big putting up a fight and there you go the UK has capitulated GG guys so 
what to learn from this. I guess to a certain degree this is kind of a little bit cheesy because I do think my fleet isn't very well balanced. I've gone for a fleet that is very submarine and destroyer intensive. What s destroyers tend to do is they tend to be screening ships and they seem to absorb a lot of damage. Oh my god, look at that battle. Damn! Yeah, so submarines tend to be screening ships that seem to absorb quite a lot of damage. There you go. Well, there's 25, but there was a lot more to begin with. They've all got sunk. They absorb most of the damage in combat. And you can see there's still 150 submarines left behind. The submarines are really good because they're very hard to detect and they can hold naval superiority in a region. What you tend to find is you try and do an amphibious assault and it'll say you don't have, I think it's 50% naval superiority to launch your amphibious assault. And using submarines is the cheesiest way of doing it. So what you can do is launch um, your submarines into this region, gain naval superiority. They're still in incredibly difficult to hit the submarines, uh, but you can still hold the territory while you do your amphibious assault while you grab the territory. Guys, that's pretty much it. Any comments, leave them in the chat. And remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.